Hello and welcome to the Pro Yaki Report, Season 1, Episode 23, Interleague Play Update. I'm Michael Westbay, your host. Part 2 of Starters vs. Relievers is going to be delayed for a week for this special report. Well, it's happening again. Just like in 2010, the Pacific League is clearly dominating the Central League in interleague play. Don't believe me? When I got up this morning, this is what I saw in the newspaper. That doesn't work for everybody? You want it in English? Okay, I'll bring in an English version that I've created. There we go. Teams in green are in the Pacific League. Teams in blue are in the Central League. And if we put this side by side with the final 2010 Interleague standings, you can see an amazing resemblance. The Carp and Giants have swapped places, but with Hiroshima faltering on Saturday, losing 10-1 to the Hawks, all six Central League teams are now below 500. Looking for other interleague trends, I broke down the final results of all interleague play since its inception in 2005. For some reason, I have long imagined that the Pacific League has been dominant, similar to 2010, throughout. However, the Central League has actually maintained at least three of the top six spots in all years except 2010 and 2011. That doesn't mean that they've finished over 500, though. I then added up all the results into a single table and sorted by winning percentage. Several things come clear. First of all, SoftBank, Lotte, and Nippon Ham dominate interleague play. Jim Allen predicted that Nippon Ham would win interleague play in the Interleague preview episode of the Japan Baseball Weekly podcast a few weeks back. The reason he gave was because they have the most and longest distance to travel and are more used to it than the other teams, especially their Central League counterparts. But if that's true, shouldn't Seattle be the best American League team in MLB? Hmm, whatever. Nonetheless, Lotte took the first two interleague titles back when the teams played each other three times at home and three away, rather than the current two times each. SoftBank has taken three interleague championships. Nippon Ham started off interleague poorly the first couple of years, but has done so overwhelmingly well in the years they've finished in the top three that they look perhaps a little more dominating than they may deserve. Second, Yomiuri, Chunichi, Hanshin, and Seibu are just holding their heads over water. The Giants are the only Central League team to have won the Interleague Championship in the eight seasons completed so far, that feat finally coming last season. They finished over 500 five times, at 500 once, and under 500 twice. As the Giants have long been an indicator of the Central League's strength, holding just 11 games over 500 overall may be why I have it in my head that the Pacific League is continually dominating the Central League in interleague play. I was kind of surprised to see Chunichi so high up, though. They've been the team whining louder than the other Central League teams to do away with interleague play. Yet, they aren't nearly as inept in interleague play as the impression I have of them. Hanshin and Seibu have each managed second-place finishes, but have generally been middle-of-the-field players. Third, Yakult and Oryx are just underwater. Yakult has managed to finish in second place in interleague play twice, while Oryx, as volatile in interleague as they are in the Pacific League pennant races, managed to take all the marbles in 2010. Generally thought of as losing teams, 
they have managed to win their share of games throughout the years. Fourth, Ducktin, Hiroshima, and Yokohama are just plain helpless. Ducktin has managed to finish as high as fifth place, doing so in 2008, and the Pacific dominated 2010. However, they finished the other six interleague seasons under 500. On the bright side, Ducktin was in first place up until their loss to Yokohama on Saturday that saw Lotte take a half-game lead for this interleague season. Hiroshima got off to a very good start in this season's interleague competition, but has since fallen flat. Over the years, they finished as high as third place and as low as last twice. The Carp seemed to be one of those invisible middle-of-the-pack teams for the most part. Then there's Yokohama, finishing in last place three of the eight completed interleague seasons, and they're well on their way to doing so a fourth time. They finished as high as third place in 2007, but fell to winning just one-fourth of their games, that is, a 6-18 and 18 record, for each of the following three consecutive interleague seasons. I have long believed that the main reason that the Central League teams want to do away with interleague play is because they don't like giving up their revenue for nationally televised Giants games by losing two whole giant home games every year. But with a repeat of 2010's Pacific League dominance of the Central League looking like a very strong possibility, maybe the Central League teams just don't like looking so bad against their less popular sister league. Despite the fact that the Pacific and Central League teams are split half and half between the top six and bottom six teams overall, there's still a very strong feeling amongst fans that 2010 and what's happening now in 2013 really does reflect the balance of power between the leagues as well. Now, Jim Allen's explanation that the Pacific League teams are more used to travel than the Central League teams just doesn't really feel right to me. There has got to be some other differentiator that we're missing. As for my own opinion, there's something that Ducton's Hoshino Kantoku had mentioned while criticizing his team for their loss against Yokohama yesterday. That is, Hoshino Kantoku said, Those hitters seeing Fuji for the first time were able to hit. We lost because those who have seen him before didn't. Now, he was referring to Andrew Jones going 2-for-4 in the game with a line drive home run, and Casey McGee going 3-for-4, the pair of them accounting for three of the four hits that Fuji gave up through eight innings. The dynamic about interleague play that I really do feel is most important is how one does against a team that one hasn't seen very often before. And I think that it's interesting that Hoshino Kantoku would bring this up just when I needed that little soundbite. But still, I'm kind of left wondering, what has Hoshino Kantoku done to prepare his team against a competition that they haven't faced very much of? And what about the other teams in the Pacific League? Do they have some sort of secret strategy for scouting and preparing for the Central League competition that the Central League teams aren't incorporating themselves. I also kind of wonder, with regard to Hoshino Kantoku's comment, have all of the young Eagles really seen Fuji before? There are quite a few young players on the team, and Fuji hasn't pitched in the Pacific League for a number of years. So that kind of seems like a slightly disingenuous comment on Hoshino Kantoku's part. Nonetheless, do you have any theories about why the Pacific League 
teams dominate the Central League teams? If so, I'd like to hear them. And now it's time for the Pocket Calendar. This week's Japan Baseball Weekly podcast will feature an interview with Yakult's Tony Barrett. The duo of John and Jim will then be discussing the Pacific League dominance in interleague play, among other subjects. It should be fun to compare notes after this week's podcast is released tomorrow, June 3rd. Do you have any questions or comments about this week's report, or perhaps even ideas for future reports? If so, feel free to write me either on JapaneseBaseball.com or in the Google Plus ProYaku community. I do encourage you to go ahead and share these videos to other social networks, but for comments, that's where I'm going to see them. And with that, I submit to you this week's ProYaku Report. Thank you for joining me. Until next week, take care.